Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. So in a future project, not a future project, a project that I'm actually making in the shop, I'll do a little bit of a quick click here for that, give you a little tidbit of that. I need this, which seems pretty simple, but it's a board with a constant taper from one edge to the other that we're gonna use on that project. And I went into the old CarbCo software and I figured out how to do that with the CNC machine. As we all know, I like to use the CNC whenever we can to prove that you can do things other than flat projects. So let me turn the camera around. We'll get on the computer. We'll do a little quick tutorial in CarbCo Maker Plus now. This is done in CarbCo Maker Plus, not CarbCo Maker. And we'll get going and we'll show you how you do it. Let's get started. Okay, so as I said, the project requires the board to have a taper along the short length. So let's open up CarbCo Maker Plus here, and I'll show you how we do this. So to begin with, my material size, my work area, is larger than what the actual piece I need is. So we'll begin with the square tool, and we'll create a square. The piece I need is going to be 17 by 3, so we'll come over here to the right, and we will make this 17. We'll make the height 3. Click Create. F9 puts it in the center. So all of this around the outside is going to be utilized for clamping to hold the piece in place, obviously. So we now have the dimension of the stock that I actually need. We're going to go to the Shape Editor up here, this pyramid-looking tool. It's going to open up this screen over here. We're going to leave plain where it is. We don't care about the angle. We don't care about limit. What we want to do is start with a start height of 0.75. We want to add material. We're going to click Apply. Close this out. If we rotate this up, we can now see that we have a height. So we can use that. Let's turn this a little bit to the angle here so I'm hoping I can get this so that you can see this because this is difficult to do um, with the computer simulation and the television. Alright so now we have our raised material we're going to go to the fade relief tool open that. Now as you can see it's faded from here to here that's the wrong axis I don't want it to fade from there to there. We can correct that on this side we're going to fade 0 on the X. We're going to fade from 0 on the Y. We're going to again fade to 0 on the X and we're going to fade to 3 because that is what our width of the actual piece that we need finished is. If we turn that up we can now see that the, if I can get this in a good position for y'all, the taper is in the correct direction but it's way too steep. So if you go over here to this side, fade strength, you can slide this bar back and forth. I'll slide it, watch the stock. Let me zoom in so it makes it easier for you to see. I'll slide the bar, you watch the stock. As I slide the bar back, you can see that the bevel or the taper increases and decreases. Now, the taper I need is only 10%, but for effect here, I'm going to go around here like 50. And we're going to click Apply. And as you see, it jumps down. I don't want it to do that, so now I'm going to reduce the slide all the way back to zero, and I'm going to click Apply once more. And now it locks it at the 50%. Now it's a simple um, relief tool path. We can close this out. We go up here to Relief Tools, Machine Relief. We don't want to do the whole thing because it'll take out all of the stock. I don't want it to cut where I'm clamping, so we're going to change this to selected vectors we need to click or select I'm sorry a finishing tool which will be in this case a quarter inch ball nose we're gonna select that click it one more time we're gonna change that to tool number two right here I don't think we need to adjust our feeds and speeds all of that looks correct actually I don't like that step down of a quarter of an inch let's change that to uh, 0.1 Scrolling down, we need to click a roughing tool. Now I'm going to do the same tool. I'm going to use the ball nose 
as a roughing tool so that I don't have to change I don't have to do a tool change I can just tell the machine to start again and it doesn't even know that I've changed it it's not that much material that the roughing tool is going to take off anyway let's open this up and make sure this is right at point one again feed appears to be correct it'll be tool number one so that's correct I don't think I need any lead-in moves we do have to click to define the material so I'm going to make that 0 0.75 click OK let's slide this up and calculate the tool path alright so now it's done the relief let's close this out double click here and let's shut off the tool path so that I can see the vectors I like to click off the vectors like I just did and click on them one more time. Then we're going to do a profile tool path to cut this piece loose. We want to go outside the vector, start depth is 0, finish depth is 0.75. We're going to select a tool. And in this case, I am going to switch back to a quarter inch end mill. So I'm going to have to do a tool change, which I'll separate the files when I save them. And if you're using Carveco Maker Plus, you probably already realize how to do that. You can save these files or save these tool paths in separate files so that you can restart the machine, re zero for Z with a different tool, and begin to cut out the profile. So, back to this finish depth is 75, 0.75, I'm sorry. End mill is correct. Now, normally I would put in bridges here, probably two. There would be one that would land here. Let me slide this over, reselect these vectors. I would put one in here and one here just to hold it. But again, for visual effect, I'm not going to do that so that I can simulate this toolpath and I'll delete the waste material and I'll be able to show you that my finished product is actually that tapered board that I'm looking for. So I'm not going to put in bridges in this case. Let's calculate that. We'll close this out. Now let's go to toolpaths and let's simulate the toolpath here. I'm not going to do the control bar. We'll just simulate the whole thing. Once it finishes, <clears throat> I'll rotate this around a little bit so that you can see. And let's click on simulation. Let's delete the waste material. And as you see here, I have ended up with the board that I'm looking for with the taper or the bevel or however you want to say that so that I can use this in the next project. And that's all there is to it, guys. So I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. As always, give us a like, a share, and subscribe. And again, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.